So, as I was finishing up the uh, 5150 motherboard build, I was digging through stuff looking for parts, and I came across some old motherboards. I think a couple of these I picked up at a yard sale, very cheap, maybe, I don't remember, I've got a stack of them. The most complete one looks to be this 386 motherboard. So it, it's got a 40 megahertz 386 on it, it's actually got a, a math coprocessor, an 80 or an 8387. Uh, see, it's, you know, it's an ISA motherboard. There's apparently some cache memory on it. So I started digging around for parts to see if I could actually wake this guy up. So uh, I'm here basically with the same setup I had as we were playing with the 5150 motherboard. Uh, the one thing on this I, I forgot to mention is the CMOS battery here has just started to leak. Uh, so I just went ahead and clipped it out of there. So at the moment I don't have a battery backup for the CMOS. So I'm assuming if it actually wakes up, I should get a, a CMOS error. Uh, I'll have to come up with a, another battery for that at some point. I don't, at the moment, think I have anything here that I can use. Uh, let's go ahead and put power on this guy. Let's see if there's any signs of life. Oh, the other thing in digging was I actually found some uh, SIM memories from 1988. Uh, they're 256K by 9s. So. And poking around, it actually had the uh, motherboard manual in the box with it. So these should work. It's just a matter of getting them installed. Oh, this is always hard to do when you can't see what you're doing. It's been a long time since I've played with a machine like this. Uh, in the early 90s, I was part of a software startup and did a ton of development using Watcom C uh, in, in the 386 protected mode and a lot of assembly as well on some graphics and game engines. Uh, we never really had any success. That one's labeled speaker. So, shit, I'm going to need a VGA card. Well, luckily I've got all the cards that we had previously. There's a 16-bit VGA card. You know, I've got the same setup here that I had for that 5150. Well, if I'm lucky, I should get a CMOS. Bio should wake up and we should get a CMOS error. Let me get it in shot. Now rotate it a bit. Make it a little easier to see. Get it in plane with the camera. Hopefully the glare from the window isn't too bad. And let's throw power on and see what happens. Up. Oh. Well, there's a very positive sign. CMOS system options not set. Uh, F1, well, the BIOS is from 1991. It'd be about correct for a 386 machine like this. Uh, well, we might have a shot at this thing actually doing something. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm going to power down. So, next step. I guess it's going to be floppy drive. Let's see if we can actually get it to boot something. So, floppy controller. I've actually got a couple of uh, 1.2 megabyte floppies here. Don't know if they work. 
swap you back down so you can kind of see what I'm doing hardware wise. too many loose cables that should make that the B drive it'll need power so make this the A drive actually isolate those a bit well it'd be fun if this thing had actually boot Back to the same spot in the CMOS, F1. I want to make changes. I've got two 1.2 megabyte, five and a quarter inch floppies. Uh, escape, most likely F F10. Save and exit. I've got that 360K boot floppy. Well, that sounds like DOS loading to me. Huh. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's definitely MS-DOS starting. Very familiar sound to we who used MS-DOS. Hey. <laughs> this is the uh, five and a quarter inch 360k floppy I created for the 5150 project with F disk on it so I can play around with hard drives. Uh, cool. Well, this is a short video, seven minutes. Plugged everything in, turned it on, and it actually worked. That's uh, quite interesting. It's the V floppy drive working. It does. Hmm. Well, there it is. I did download, uh, I, I found in France a website that's got CD images, and up there I actually found the Win 98 second edition CD, uh, which means I'm going to need to find a CD ROM drive, assuming the hard drive controller works here. Uh, I do someplace. We kind of looked at these before. Oh, there it is. I've got an old IDE hard drive here. Uh, no idea what size it is. Oh, 15 gigabyte. So it looks like it's a replaced with compact 15 gigabyte. So I'm assuming it's 15 gigabyte. I don't remember how big a hard drive Windows 98 SE can address. I would assume I could get a couple partitions on there. Uh, interesting uh, I'll keep chugging ahead here so anyhow I'll be back the later video as I find stuff and uh, we'll see what we can make this little machine do so sorry I didn't get video of this but I'll talk you through what I did uh, once I got the I, I had an issue with the power connector on the floppy drive I got that fixed uh, there was a couple of partitions on that hard drive. I couldn't delete them with F disk. I'm assuming they were probably NTFF, NTFS partitions. So to remove those, I actually went into the hard disk utility and did a hard disk format. And that just essentially reformatted the drive and all the previous content was gone. So that's what we got to this point. So I want to go ahead and uh, boot from floppy. And it should now auto boot from floppy. And it is, I can hear the head stepping on a pretty standard DOS boot. That noise I've heard so many times. Now I should be able to use FDIS to create a partition on this drive. And this is DOS version, I think, 4 still. Yeah, version 4. This is from that IBM DOS package I found. Uh, I really need to get a DOS 622. 
or 621 install package so I can have bigger partitions. But anyhow, that's neither here nor there, F disk. I should now be able to create a partition on that hard drive. Create DOS partition, create primary partition, use 100% of the space. And it should have marked it active. Oh, it's so exciting. And we are booted. Format system C colon. Okay, f hit all the keys this time. Format slash system C colon. Proceed with format. Boy, compared to the uh, MFM drive I was mucking with earlier, these IDE drives are substantially quicker. Machine just crashed. Oh, seek failure again on the floppy. I'm still having trouble with that power supply connector. Hmm, that's irritating. Power connector is intermittent. Maybe I've got a crack solder joint. I have to resolder those on the floppy PCB. is there. Uh, let's go to C. Let's go to DOS folder. Docs. So apologies for the continually uh, interrupted video here. We're having issues at work uh, and I keep getting called in. I'm remoted in from home. So let me try again. The DOS folder. CD DOS. A. Let me just get a few DOS files on here. sign P dollar sign G that seems correct close it oh man this keyboard and I don't get along we should now be able to boot off that hard drive Sweet. Looks like we're good. Assuming the path statement worked. No, that's not what I wanted. Three. Actually, I want to do a one. So it looks like the largest disk that DOS 4 could deal with is 504 megabytes. 
once we've consumed here. So uh, as I move forward into getting to Windows 98 second edition on here, this partition will get blown away. But it's progress. So kind of do a pan here. We've got, of course, the 3 m 6 machine sitting back here, VGA card, floppy ID controller, uh, the ID hard drive from earlier, a couple of floppy drives, the A drive here on top. This is the one having the power supply connection issues. I got to troubleshoot. But, uh, oh, sorry about the jerkiness of the video. Anyhow, that's pretty cool to uh, pull a junk 386 motherboard that I didn't know I had out of a box and find the manual and actually uh, have it come to life and work here. Luckily, I found it and got that leaky battery removed before it did major damage. There was actually several other motherboards in that same package or that same box that I worked through. There's one here in my hands uh, that I'll hold it up here and hopefully you can see it. This is a 286 motherboard but up here where the battery was how well that's in camera the battery was across here the terminals are corroded and the keyboard connector is completely corroded off uh, the inside of the edge connector here is corroded and the corrosion spread this motherboard is shot uh, I will probably do a mini parts reclaim get the 486 out of there it's probably about a, like maybe the power connector up here if I can get it off uh, it's a shame that this board's been lost, uh, but it is what it is. So, uh, so you don't know don't know exactly where I got these or when, but anyhow, we're to this point. Uh, next step is find a CD-ROM drive and see what we can do next.